First of all, thank you very much for your time and for doing this. A lot of a lot of people asked for an interview specifically with you. Sweet, nice. Hello, everybody. <laughs> uh, one of the first questions I ask is favorite weapon in the game, but I think everyone in the world knows that <laughs> already. Yeah. I, I feel like, uh, yeah, if, if, if you know who I am at all, uh, definitely the grenades are the best. Uh, <laughs> if you don't know who I am at all, grenades are the best. Uh... <laughs> if people don't know who, who you are, they just don't pay attention. Like when they die, like they don't see that red. <laughs> uh, that's kind of <laughs> arch from, from your grenade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so speaking about grenades, I remember you said that one of the tips you gave me was that the the arch shown when you hold a grenade, it actually goes slightly closer closer than the grenade actually lands. So I need to kind yeah, of factor that in. So so the yeah when you when you've got the grenade in your hand and you're aiming it around, you'll see like kind of a an arc that the grenade's going to follow, and uh, the grenade will blow up. Uh, a good like you know six to eight feet beyond that arch so you can kind of like guesstimate where the grenade's actually going to blow up and that's really handy for like if you're like flying in on somebody and need to drop it or um or just like trying to you know get it in a window or just like bounce it very lightly off an edge you can always just kind of like guess where that grenade's gonna like you know, it'll like if you're bouncing it, it's going to take you know a little bit of that momentum off of the grenade, but you'll be able to kind of like see, you know, if you if you pay attention to it enough, you'll be able to see like where it's going to blow up, and like you know, it's kind of a practice by doing and get the feel for it sort of thing. But you know, just throw a bunch of grenades and and try to like watch and see where it blows up past that past where that arch is um, shown. And then, you know, after after you've done it enough times, you'll get it, get the hang for it. It's, it's just like leading with a sniper rifle or something like that. You Like, once you know that you have to look for it, you can kind of, like, fine-tune where you, where you are looking so that you get the feel for it yourself. Nice. You just opened another, like, the whole universe for me. So I was going to ask about, sometimes I saw you throwing a grenade too high, and almost, that kind of it detonates in the air, and that means, like, mm -hmm. builds that people build around them, hoping that it will protect from the grenade. It, like, they're basically useless. Mm -hmm. uh, another another thing you just mentioned is that I tried to throw a grenade so kind of it bounces a little bit and falls out of, like, off there, of a cliff, and it never mm -hmm. worked for me. So you just said that it's actually possible. Yeah, 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 yeah. If like you know, if you're up on top of the sign or something like that, like I've done this a couple of times over in um, Complex, where I'll be on one side of the the double sided sign and somebody will be on the other side, and if you can just barely bounce it off the the edge of the other side, uh, you'll be able to hit them at the top of that wall. Uh, wow. so yeah, like, um, it's, it's, it takes a little finesse and like it, like I don't get it every time, but I've gotten it a couple of times and you know, it, you can definitely use that bounce to slow down where the grenade's going to drop to and use that to, to get them, um, to get a, uh, a hit on like the, the top edge of a wall rather than, uh, trying to like, you know, get it perfectly to to explode in midair interesting that makes sense but yeah yeah, yeah. It, it works that's that's okay i, I should keep to keep practicing that mm -hmm. so another question i had i saw you throwing grenades usually two at a time and mm -hmm. you you spread them a little bit like if i i saw that maybe maybe again just please, please let me know if if you actually do that or if it's just like Randomly, I saw play of games when you actually spread them. Do you do you ever drop two grenades at the same spot, or do you usually like give them some space? So uh, there's a couple of things that I do with in that um, with that in mind. Um, one, grenades are really good if you're trying to echolocate your target. 
Um, so like I might throw them at separate spots if I, like if there's no builds out, um, I'll I'll toss a few out just to see if like if I'm coming over the top of a of a hill, uh, if they're over here or over here, like you know you won't necessarily bullseye the target but you might get like a like a ping like you know eight points of damage over here and then you know okay i need to look right there and have my gun at the ready and when i come over this hill i can just start shooting and i know exactly where they are uh so that's one way i use grenades another way i do it is if there are builds in play um or you think somebody's going to build up really fast uh, you can throw a grenade, hit your B button, A button, whichever one like auto loads the next grenade into your hand, um, and throw it again. So just like fast, two grenades go out, um, and that makes it so that the first grenade will take down any builds. The second grenade will hit them because they're probably not going to be able to build fast enough to block the second grenade. <laughs> I like the term echolocating. <laughs> Uh, mm -hmm. Do you use zone grenades for that as well? Oh, yeah. Like, zone grenades are a little bit better for it because, like, you actually see the trail that the person is, you know, is running along. But since I tend to prioritize just regular grenades, that's how I, you know, regular grenades are going to do 150 points of damage if they land on somebody. Uh, zone bombs are really more effective for chasing somebody out of hard cover. Uh, because, you know, they'll hear the zone bomb coming, they'll have plenty of time to, like, run away from it, so you might get, like, one or two pings as they get out of the zone bomb after it's activated. But, you know, with grenade, you know, if, if you're lucky, you've hit them, and you've hit them for 150 points of damage, they're going to be really easy to clean up after that. So, you know... I always prioritize the regular grenades. Nice. Does it also mean that in some situations, like for example, if you know that the zone is going to shrink to, to defiance, for example, with a lot of buildings when people usually hide, in those cases, do you still prioritize frags or do you prefer zone bombs? Um, in that situation, like generally speaking, I'll just already have six grenades for six, eight, who knows how many, like way too many grenades in my backpack <laughs> and no heels. And I'll just, yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I'm really easy to kill because I don't, I don't carry enough heels. Um, <laughs> Not convincing but, uh, enough. <laughs> um uh but yeah like uh i'll generally just keep using the grenades and like you know if i uh if i'm coming up on a building or know that somebody's inside i'll just like pepper it you know get a couple of grenades in the windows and know that that's gonna do a, a fair amount of damage and you know if you get it in the right room with somebody that'll generally scare them out anyway and you'll hear the window break or you know, you'll see that that little ping of like, you know, eight points of damage that, you know, just barely touched them as they got out of the range of the the area of effect of the grenade. So, um, yeah, like for me, I, I rarely ever prioritize zone bombs just because they, you know, they, I, I feel like I get enough usage and and enough information out of the regular grenade mm -hmm. um and you know like i said when it goes really well it goes really well so um yeah the the regular grenade nice i think we need to change the location slightly because like that <laughs> the background gives me some psychedelic effect I'm yeah <laughs> the, 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 spinning a little bit <laughs> maybe, maybe maybe like that yeah like perfect yeah there is a tower in the background um speaking about your team so I know you carry a lot of grenades. Is it the same about your usual regular teammates, or do you usually rely on your kind of loadout of grenades? Uh, I I feel as though I've I've influenced uh, the folks I play with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I like to say is I I've trained everybody to make really bad decisions, and you know, 
uh, that uh, it, it tends to be that, you know, folks that I play with tend to carry a little bit extra grenades. Um, I know if I'm with GS, uh, he'll, he'll end up with, you know, four or five or six <laughs> grenades in his inventory and I'll end up with six grenades in my inventory and we'll just be like, let's climb something. <laughs> <laughs> Think it's air raid time. Uh, Darth is the same way. She she has learned to really love him as well. So you know, I, I feel like we're always rolling pretty deep with the uh, with the explosives, and uh, you know, it it often ends with uh, you know just like one poor soul at the end of the map with <laughs> or at the end of the round with all of us just throwing all of our bombs at them at the same time. So see who's who's got the you know who's going to be the lucky one that comes out with the uh the last explosion um <laughs> i think i've been a couple we... of times on the other end of that of that fun <laughs> just like oh my god how many grenades do these people have <laughs> why why did you leave anybody for did you leave anybody anybody else any grenades no no but the answer is no <laughs> interesting. What you just said is interesting because in a couple of cases when people like threw one grenade at me, the second one, the third one, I always assume like, okay, that's it. There, there, there can't be more than like four, for example. So mm -hmm. the fifth grenade that, that usually that kill, <laughs> kills me usually because like I don't, I don't build anything. I just don't expect it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. So apart from apart from grenades, uh, another. Great tip I learned from you is that you usually don't. You said you don't carry health. Can you uh, uh, elaborate on that a little bit? So I I, I generally prioritize um, grenades over health, and you know one one thing that I'll like I'll uh, it, it it comes and goes. Sometimes I do carry shield sodas, um, but like. I'll typically not carry any bananas or uh, or health sodas or anything like that. Um, the The reasoning for that is uh, shields. Uh, like you know, if if you get hurt, somebody shoots you, uh, they're gonna eat away at your shields first, um, and then after they've taken out your shields, they're gonna start eating into health. So if you've taken more than 100 points of damage and you've got something to regenerate shields on you, you get yourself topped back up, uh, you're at more than 100 points of, you know, damage that you can take again. Uh, whereas if you've got healing items um, and no shields to, to regenerate, the most you're ever going to get back is 100 points. So it's it's handy to have, you know, shields more than it is to have um, healing items, I feel like. Um, but uh, as well, like shield sodas versus shield shakers, you can pop the sodas really fast. Like I was talking about, like, you know, hit that inventory button. Uh, or just tap that button, and you can reload the sodas into your hands like really fast and just chug them. Um, whereas uh, shield shakers, you still have to like sit there and shake it and you know pop it in. Uh, so you know if you can drop you know four, five, six sodas into you really, really fast and then just jump back into the action. Um, you know, you're you're going to be back up to full health. Maybe you take a couple of hits and actually get those extra, you know, twenty points out of uh, chugging six sodas. Um, but you know, like it's it's going to get you back into the into the action faster. Um, but that's again, like if I if I haven't found eight grenades and I'm you know, futzing around, like trying to decide whether or not I should drop my P90 and <laughs> just take the <laughs> grenades because I love them so much. Um, <laughs> I have I have a problem. You have a problem. I don't. I'm very normal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in the desert and there is literally no nothing, like absolutely nothing, there is just one banana, then you might you might 
consider taking yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I've and I've you know actually recently been picking up more health, um, and it's been working out really well because like it it does actually keep me in the game longer. And I and I acknowledge that the that having some health items on you while you're you know rolling around and like taking damage and everything like it'll keep you in the game longer um i have a problem <laughs> knowledge that i have a problem uh <laughs> but at the same time it, it tends to work out pretty well because you know if i if i blow somebody up and then you know only have to put 50 points of damage into them that goes real fast and generally speaking they'll have um healing items that i can scavenge so yeah i and you know just in the way that i, I particularly play um i'm always just kind of like scanning for whatever i can salvage as i'm going along so you know, a little bit of shield here, a little bit of healing here. Like, you know, it, it all just kind of works out in the end. Um, and, you know, I, I keep my uh, my goblin sapper <laughs> supply <laughs> kit ready to go as I'm uh, uh, wandering around just flinging bombs at people and pushing pushing the close range fights. So, yeah. Nice. What you just said is uh, is different from what I saw from other players. Like, for example, I watched Zolota playing a couple of times, and she was, mm -hmm. like, on 50 health, and there was a 50 shield, like, sitting, like, just one meter from her. And she just made a direct beeline between, like, this place, the enemy is there, so I'm not going to kind of just spend a fraction of a second just to take the, the, the shield. I'm just going directly to the, to the fight. What mm -hmm. you just said is it sounds different. Like, do you still... Even if you're in the middle of the fight, do you still can scan the area to to be able to pick up things here and there? Uh, it it all kind of depends. I've totally overlooked uh, stuff in the past, and my and my stream will like you know be screaming at me just like pick up the heel, <laughs> like it's right there, like pick it up. Um, and you know, so it, it all kind of depends. Uh, sometimes I completely lose track of how much health I've got, how much shield I've got, and I'm just fully in that moment and on the hunt. Um, sometimes I'm, you know, I, like you know, it 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 all just kind of depends on on the individual moment. Um, but you know, typically I'll I'll because I'm prioritizing, you know having as much grenade action as I can. Um, it, it limits the amount of, like, stored... Uh, like, the, the, I have... To, to put it in perspective, I've um, completely forgotten I've had bananas in my backpack when I do have bananas in my backpack. Because I just don't expect them to be there. <laughs> <laughs> like I just I, I... don't do that. So I'm like I, I, just running around, like, oh my god, I've uh, uh, like I'm at like one HP, and I've got to go find something to heal with, and then like open my backpack and be like, oh, I had a banana in here. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I saw that on your stream once when yeah. I was just literally sitting like and screaming at the, at the screen like you have a banana in your backpack and you're like on oh, no, twenty health or something running for a pretty mm -hmm. long time. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next question is, what's your recent skill or I don't know trick or tip you learned in the game or maybe something you are still working on right now? Um, I'm definitely trying to trying to level up with an op um for the longest time i've uh i've just worked with Sako uh as my sniper rifle um just cuz like you know being able to one hand peek over a wall with it you know is like leaves you very unexposed um but after they nerfed it a few months back i've been more interested in checking out the op and also you know because i generally main a uh, an ak you know the the effective range and the ability to to you know 
aim long distance with an AK ver versus a Sako, it's pretty minimal, uh, or like the difference isn't super huge um, for me at least because I can kind of manage the the recoil on an AK. Uh, but yeah, having the having the scope on the op is uh, is a pretty big bonus. So. I've been playing with it more and getting a little bit better at it, uh, but it's it you know it's definitely something I've got to practice with a lot more um, to get anywhere near the the level that other people are at. Um, but then again, uh, you know, I do most of my fighting close up and you know spend most of my time pushing as close to targets as I can. So the op you know like i'll if if i have an op if i have a choice between an op and two grenades it's going to be the two yeah it's going to be obvious um how do you train op do you go to the training park or do you usually practice inside the game just inside the game um you know you got to be able to learn how to lead your targets and how to uh that, like that's the that's the big thing is like knowing where you're placing um an opponent on that or like where you're placing your reticle in you know in relation to an opponent that's moving um cuz you know when somebody's running in a straight line or flying in a straight line that's when you're going to get them most regularly that surprise shot where they they think they're just going some Smack them on that on that uh, on that journey. <laughs> um, that's going to be like you know that's where I feel the 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 op it has has its most effective usage is you know your surprise first attack. Um, then after that, you're probably going to get a little bit better results out of uh, an aggressive push or. Um, you know, like try to get in close and and you know flank around their side or something like that. Oh, interesting. So in this case, do you synchronize your actions with your teams? Like, for example, somebody can get closer, then you you make a surprise attack, and then other people push, or maybe you push as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I'll generally tell. Um, like, it it generally works out with the folks that I play with. They'll they'll tend to anchor in a little bit more, and I'll go for a flank. Um, mostly because, you know, like, I, I do prioritize the close-up fight. Um, so, uh, you know, if you can get your teammates to, to draw focus, um, you know, like, GS is perfect at this because he, he likes using an M60. Um, so, you know, he can just sit there and chug away at them, uh, you know, throw a lot of damage or like just throw a lot of bullets at them and keep them pinned down behind cover while I move around to the side. Um, and while I'm moving, I'm taking away the cover that they have left. Um, so, you know, if, if we can get at a 90 degree angle to where, you know, your teammates are, are shooting at them, you'll generally speaking, have complete clear line of sight on them and be able to just clean them up from there. Interesting. So one thing I noticed when I talk to people at a high level is that the higher level they are, the less they can care or practice the kind of their mechanics of the game, and the more they think about kind of how to prepare for the game or communication for the, with the team, strategy, movement, things like everything apart from shooting. So, like how they you're like they're focused on like strategy and and like gameplay like yeah like once mm -hmm. you've got the feel for the guns it, themselves it you know you're you're the only thing you have left that you can like refine is you know like all of the other dynamics. So, you know, my my play style doesn't mesh well with um like competitive play um for example. 
because you know like i like to just go you know right into the fight go at every you know like if i hear if i hear gunshots i'm charging at it um i want to you know try to just rack up as many kills as i can and make it a good show for people and just like constantly be on the aggressive um but you know if if you're doing that in competitive play you're the one that makes the noise first you're the one that's going to die first um because everyone else is going to you know sit and watch and wait and try to like pick up little bits of information figure out where everybody is before they let anybody know where they are um so like you know anytime i've played a scrim or anything like that i just get absolutely demolished because the the thought processes that people have in you know in those competitive games is so much different and so much more refined than what I bring to the table as, you know, just a content creator that wants to like put on a good show. Um, yeah, it's uh, the, the strategies involved on the higher level, like competitive gameplay are very, very different than just like playing with, playing with your buddies and trying to have fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, positioning uh, in particular is a is a big issue um, in you know trying to get the win and whatnot. Um, you know, I've been sandwiched between two squads at the same time way too many times, and it's a place that I don't like being. So you know, if I if I have the opportunity uh, to you know, like if I know where you know squad A is and squad B is and squad C is then I know, you know, okay, I, I want to have my back clear at least or try as much, you know, as, as often as I can, I'll try to like take out one squad at a time so that we're not trying to fight on two fronts. Um, so it's really just kind of like managing threat level and, you know, knowing where you're going to be the most secure um and where it's going to be easy to push from and you know like you don't want to have to run across a big open field late game while the zone's pushing you so like you know trying to find those comfortable mm -hmm. places where you're going to be able to like bunker down um and you know protect yourself um but yeah like the it, it all just kind of flows in that moment as well like how the game's going and you know sometimes you just get into a bad situation and you get wiped out real quick and then uh you know sometimes you you get a really good situation and you think you're everything's perfect and you still get smoked <laughs> <laughs> you know it's uh it it all just kind of like that's kind of the reason why like the online um you know multiplayer is so compelling and keeps people coming back is like every game is going to shift every game is going to be different you're like you're never going to have the same game twice so you know it, it, the the replayability is always there for it nice if you can think about yourself let's say half a year ago maybe a year ago what advice would you give to yourself maybe three things to do three things to avoid Mm. Oh, I mean, honestly, I, I don't feel like I've changed up my strategies that much in that time. Um, you know, I still just play to have fun. I still just, uh, you know, try to get into as many fights as possible. Um, and, you know, that... <laughs> we almost we could have almost fallen uh, <laughs> um but uh yeah like you know just it 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 really hasn't shifted uh or like my play style and and mentality to the towards the game hasn't really changed all that much um since the very early days just kind of like treat it like it's a game you know it's it um the, the the consequences of failure that you press restart 
so it's uh it it doesn't hurt to to fail um are there any things no. that kind of you're trying to get rid of? Maybe like you're still focusing on something too much or kind of your any bad habits? Yeah. Um it so I'll I'll always, you know, think about like where did I go where did it go wrong? Like, you know, if I if I lose a match, I'm always like reflecting back on like what did I do that I shouldn't have done. Uh, but mostly that's just me, you know, opening up and, and, you know, telling my, you know, telling my teammates like, man, I screwed that one up. I'm, I'm owning that. I'm owning that loss. Cause like, I don't want them to ever feel like they've disappointed me, but I'll tell them like, I, I disappointed you. Um, and that, that way we can always just like keep it fun and like, you know, it's, you know, you'll hurt people if you're, you'll hurt other people's feelings if you're blaming them for losing the game for you, you know, but if, if you're just owning it and saying like, oh man, I, I shouldn't have made that push. That was really dumb, you know, then it you're just taking you're just taking the taking the loss and saying like yeah I, like sorry guys i'll do better next time um and you know nobody can nobody can take that and internalize it and and feel like they have to like play harder or be better or anything like that it's just you know th that that's how i kind of keep it fun for everybody is just like i'll take the ownership of you know what i can do better and you know just make sure that i communicate that i don't expect you know i don't expect perfection from myself let alone anybody else it's amazing how important that factor is in the game and i don't i don't mean only for like to make other people feel good it's for for the gameplay we play as well like sometimes when i when I lose, and when I blame myself too much, and if I, <laughs> I play worse in the next game and the next game after that. So what you just said mm -hmm. totally makes sense. Yeah, like, you know, it's like, it's, it is a game. It's, it's here for us to have fun with, you know. Um, if you put too much emphasis on it, you psych yourself out too much, it will affect how, like, one, it'll affect how much fun you're having. And two, it'll affect your ability to be effective. Like if you're psyching yourself out, you're going to be too stressed to, you know, to make an effective play at, at the right time. Um, so, you know, it, it, it all kind of like it has this cascading effect of, you know, like, you know, having way too much emphasis on on winning and, you know, and stressing out about whether or not somebody's going to get you like that's that's going to hurt you in the long run where if you just like have fun with it and roll with whatever happens and blow it off and just say like all right next next game restart let's go um you know it'll it'll keep it fun and it'll keep it uh it'll actually help you you know play longer and play better just because you know there there doesn't need to be a, um, a an actual consequence for uh, for anything happening in here. Mm -hmm. It's all fake. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking about consequences, do you ever check your own stats? Oh yeah, yeah. I, you know, everybody. I, I I feel like the you know the stats are always there and they're always um, very easily accessible. Um, mostly I just look at it to, to see if like, you know, like where, where, is, where am I in this big wide world of pop one in, in comparison to others, you know, um, cause you know, like I, I realize there's a lot of folks that, you know, look up to me and, you know, I, I get viewers that are always telling me like I'm the best and whatnot. I'm like, that is not even close to true. <laughs> like, just cause I can come up with a, you know, a handful of good wins, uh, every week and, and post videos of them doesn't mean I'm some unkillable God at the game. 
Um, there are way stronger players than I am, both in the competitive scene um, and in the the casual scene. Um, and like you know, it's 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 important to to stay humble in that regard of just like yeah, like there's so many strong gamers that you know really play this game excellently. Um, yeah, the 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 stats definitely prove that. Um, I'm you know I'm fairly high ranked within the 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 full scale of where other players are, but I'm nowhere near the top. Like in like in terms of like who's the best. Like that, I'm not even like that list doesn't even exist in my world. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. I have totally the same attitude to, to the gameplay and to, 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 to my skills as well. Mm -hmm. So, the, and last question. Um, when you play with randoms or maybe when, with, like, with your regular teammates, what do you think is a skill that people usually underrate? Maybe you see something important they can improve, but they just don't notice that or they're not ready maybe to practice that specific thing. Hmm. I mean, honestly, um, I tend to um, approach randoms very cautiously. Uh, not because I, you know, I expect them to be like skilled or anything. Like if I if I'm playing with a random person, I kind of expect them to be a lower ranked player, like just a lower skill level player, because I find that the the matchmaking um, tends to put very new players with me because my stats are high enough that you know it it helps balance out the the gameplay um so you know if 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 i'm you know playing with an open slot and a trio will tend to like very often i'll get matched up with a brand new player who's learning how to climb their first time um and that way you know they get to experience some like I figure on the on the back end the the logic of it is they get to experience uh, playing with you know advanced players who are going to teach them things and maybe have a, a, an easier time getting an early win and you know in like learning to enjoy the game a little bit more. Um, so it, you know that's that's just kind of what I expect if I go in with a uh, with a random. Um, I tend to reduce my exposure to that though intentionally uh, because I never know whether or not that person's going to be appropriate on stream. I'm always streaming when I'm in game. Um, so, you know, and one of the core values that I try to put forward in my content and in my streams is, um, kind of promoting non-toxic behavior and, um, you know, showing that, like, you can still be good at this game and be friendly and, you know, be kind to other people. Uh, because I feel like that is a thing that gets not necessarily overlooked, but it's very undervalued and it's very, um, you know, outside of the norm in the regular gaming world. Um, like people can be, people can generally be nice to each other to a certain degree, but there's this edge uh to that behavior that comes out where you know people get like very competitive or you know can be really rough around the edges with the with one another like you know trying to kind of like beat their chests and and act like big tough guys and it's it it just it rubs me the wrong way when i see it in other people's content and on on streams um and i feel like that um, doesn't necessarily um, showcase the gaming world very well. It it leads to a lot of the like really negative perceptions of what 
gaming is to the lay person who doesn't play video games and it keeps people out of you know engaging with this experience um and i'd rather have more people involved especially with vr um i want to see this thing grow so that we can you know really enjoy the fruits of what that means further down the road when you know more um more hardware manufacturers are able to justify creating better and better and better gear for us. Um, you know, I, I want to see that happen. Um, and we'll get there faster and sooner. And, you know, we'll have better stuff available to us when the, when the market is just like hungry for it. Uh, so, you know, the way that we make that market hungry is by making this as inclusive for everybody as possible and showing that, like, this is an awesome thing that we can all enjoy, not just, you know, not just the gamers who are willing to, you know, talk smack and, you know, approve of crudeness and ignore you know homophobia and racism and you know like let's let's try to like knock that off so we can actually like get everybody on board um so you know i i tend to shy away from anybody that's you know behaving in aggressive ways or um you know uses language that it just kind of like rubs me the wrong way that way i can still show that like this there's there's something out there for everybody even if you know even if all of that still exists you know i can i can prove that it doesn't have to be the way it is if that makes sense that's pretty cool. That's a very deep philosophy behind just regular gameplay. Yeah. <laughs> and at, a... the, at, the, at the end of the day, the more people play, the more people we can kill with grenades. Yes, absolutely. The more the more times I can uh, throw a grenade and get three kills at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It all it all fits into the larger spiral of the the great magnet in the sky. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks a lot. It was super, super helpful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for uh, putting this together. Hello, everybody that's out there. And uh, hopefully this was informative and, you know, and uh, you enjoyed what you what you saw. <laughs>